Good morning, everyone. I was asked this morning by John Hurt to do a short video on, uh, uh, well, he's, he's mentioned that this uh, research we did on Matthew 19, verse 17 was very interesting. He said, you might make a short video on how you use these online tools to match the later Bible versions against the earlier Bible quotations from various writers. Thanks again for your efforts on this, John. So we are going to say, great idea. And we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I'm going to show you a, a, an exercise just using Matthew 19, uh, verse 17. And I think this is a, a good example of things. So uh, I, I like reading the NIV or the ESV, things like that. In the NIV, you, you'll find out when you dig into this, is completely a corrupted uh, verse here. And that's just sad, very sad. It's all from the uh, post-Trinitarian uh, text of Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. And they got rid of the original version that was older and uh, has its basis in the Codex Bizet, which is older than those texts. Or at least the Codex Bizet has a more authentic original text, and it matches the Mark and Luke text. Anyway, so you, you find this, you go, what do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. So it really has nothing uh, in common with uh, what we found out yesterday. And that's that's a tragedy. Now, what would I do is I'm looking at this and I'm gonna we're going to show you how to check this out and say, do you, say to yourself, is this what Jesus really said here? I want to see what the earliest church what they thought it was. So how can we get past the Vaticanus, the 450 AD? How can we get past the Sinaiticus 350 AD and later? And I think it's actually in the 400s, but that's they, they it's assigned in the middle 300s, but whatever. How can we go further earlier than that? And so have you ever heard the word anti-Nicene? Well, we're going to bring you and show you the word anti-Nicene means pre-Nicaea. Anti is uh, Latin for prior or before, and Nicene, Nicene means Nicaea, that's the 325 conference that decided on the bi-deity of Jesus, not the Trinity yet, bi-deity was determined in 325 uh, at a Council of Nicaea, which is 45 miles outside of Constantinople, so all these bishops are ordered by Constantine, who was Pontifex Maximus, to go to Constantinople and that's why it, it's called, uh, they went to Nicaea. And so anti-Nicene means before that conference. So the pre-Trinitarian period is separately uh, uh, studied by uh, scholars. So that's how they divide it up. And then there's the post-Nicene, and there's a whole other books, set of books. So you can get underneath these manuscripts by going to the anti-Nicene books. So how are we going to find this type of stuff? So let, let me show you what you do. So first of all, I always change this. First of all, always go and take a look at the King James. And instead, go up to the King James on Bible Hub. and uh, Not Bible Hub. Uh, Bible Gateway. Go to Bible Gateway. And you'll see there's King James and there's Authorized King James. What's the difference? The King James KJV is a fake. <laughs> okay. It's a fake out. Always go to the Authorized King James. I realize now. Because whenever a verse has been modified, the King James would uh, uh, put in words and they'd italicize them. And the preface says these words are added just to help the readability of the text. It will not change its meaning and so on and so forth. Well, that isn't always the case. So you go to the authorized King James. And what do you find out? Okay, so now you're going to find out that there's multiple words being added to this text. There is, see that's in italics, there is none good. And then you see it says another, that is, and that's italicized. So you have four words in, in just one short sentence where, if, if you think about it, get, get rid of the words, keep the commandments. Uh, in fact, it's just out of these words. How many total words are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Out of nine words, four are added. Did they help the meaning? Just remove, remove these four words and you'll see what it says. None, now you do have to add a word, but it's over here, is. None is good, but one God. That's the meaning of the verse. It's about the one God. Now you're going to see they've they've cropped off. By our investigation, you're going to find out they've done even worse to it. So the three, the post-Trinitarian uh, codex, codices, or codex, Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus, these are post-Nicaea, these are after the Trinity, or after the deity of Christ, so you have the corruption possibility 
And so you shouldn't rely upon those on a verse that's dealing with the one God issue. Would you agree with me? Can I get an amen? You want to go and look at the letters that existed beforehand. Did it have this? Okay. And and then, um, and also notice something changed. The authorized King James has it different than the NIV. Instead of it saying, why do you ask me about the good? It's asking, why callest thou me good? And that's because it has a lineage of texts that predate the lineage of the, uh, the Sinaiticus of 350 plus and the 450, uh, the Vaticanus of 450 plus. And how do I know all that those are involved? You have to go over to BibleHub.com and you have to look at the comments. And then if you do enough work there, you'll figure out that issue. But for the moment, I'm not going there. So now uh, we we want to, we've, we've shown you just shredding out these four words helped understand this passage could be very, very, very significant. Okay, and once you do that, you get the authorized King James, you go to Bouncy. This is just to be get yourself familiar with the text. You should, even if you don't know Greek, it, this is not going to hurt you. It's not going to be that painful. I'm going to go over to Bouncy, and you're going to add this. Now, this is, Mouncey was not there for years. This is, this is within the last year and a half or two years. And this is unbelievable. And Mr. Mouncey, Bill Mouncey has a webpage called BillMouncey.com. And you, it's a must to learn how to use that. And it's free. This is great. It's an online dictionary, but you can access his online dictionary basically through this as well. And I'm going to show you. So now we're going to Bill Mouncey. Now we see all the words here. Now, uh, let's see, is he going to be following the NIV or the KJV? I, t- I showed you the big difference. One is talking about, uh, why do you call me good? No one is good but God, okay? Then this says, why do you ask me about what is good? Instead of saying, why do you call me good? See, so they're going with, this is now a, he's using the more corrupt version. So this just shows you, he's not the end, um, he's not the final word. Because he's also using the post-Trinitarian source text, the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus, as the basis of his work. Now, he has a choice, and I'm going to show you. If you go to BibleHub.com, you can look at the the text that the King James would have used, which is, in this case, superior to post-Trinitarian, post-Nicaea texts, which is the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus. So you wouldn't want to use... For a text that's involving the deity or not of Jesus Christ or Jesus saying, hey, don't worship me as God, this is this is key. So this, you would n- you would want to get much deeper and not rely upon post-Trinitarian or post-Nicene texts for making an analysis. You'd want to go look at the letters that pre-existed. Did, were there quotes of this passage earlier? And what did they say? Because that's going to give you the most reliable So you want to see the anti-Nicene fathers to get the truth out of this passage. So so this is clearly, why do you ask me about what is good instead of why do you call me good? Totally, fundamentally changes the whole meaning of the passage. And if you only knew, if I showed you, they also get rid of the word good teacher. So now you don't even have that context anymore. So they've got rid of the word good as well. And that again, these are multiple corruptions by Trinitarians in the post uh, Nicene p- t- time period, and and you're looking right at corruption. All of this is corrupt, okay? But but how do we know? And that's what you're gonna I'm gonna show you. All right. So but you see, there's just in this one example, I've shown you what did I show you? The NIV. Then I went backwards in time to the Authorized King James, and you saw very different words, and you also saw the italicized words. Okay. So you've you've gotten a lot in just a matter of just scratching the surface and this is just surface <laughs> and you see, you see all the the uh the ugly baggage of christianity when it comes to the trinity it's been it's affected materially everything and so mouncy is himself basing it on wrong stuff but i just want to show you let's say i want to look up the word what word here um i'll just pick Ag- agathos well is that a good one yeah, i guess so yeah all right we'll just go there so if you if you pick up agathos which means good He'll give you he'll give you the Strong's number, but he's not a, this is not a dick, um, a Strong's concordance. But he's he if those who like that can learn the numbers and keep the numbers. But he's going to give you a dictionary definition, and he says this is the Mouncy Concise Greek English Dictionary of the New Testament. So it's work that he himself has done. He has done on his own his own dictionary, and to me it looks pretty good. So he tells you that the agathos can mean good, profitable, generous, upright, virtuous. Multiple different meanings with different connotations. So that's great work. 
and therefore he is always worth looking at. Also, he shows you the transliteration into our lettering and you can kind of gather some knowledge. So see this, this you know, egg thing with the square there? So that's TH, just so you, you know, so you, you learn in the letter A, there it is. So you can learn A is A and you can figure out G is this looking thing here, the gamma. So you can figure it out. And hey, S and S don't look that far apart. And the O and the O, they don't look that far apart. So you could learn Greek over time. You just maybe have to learn some names. So it's exciting. So you might start getting more interested in knowing in more in depth about the words and where they, you know, what uh, meanings they have and so on. But this is this is an essential task. OK, so now we've gone a couple of layers down. Now we want to check earlychristianwritings.com. How do we do that? OK, so I want to show you here. So you could just type in. Uh, Okay, so now we're going to type in uh, www.earlychristianwritings.com. And it'll default maybe to the last thing you've been doing. So I was looking at John E. Katana, but I want to kind of get you away from that specific page. So let's try to go to the home page and then see what we see. All right, look at this. I mean, this is exciting stuff just to, to look at. Um, and you'll see. So let's say you wanted to learn about Galatians and it gives you the time period and shows you the estimated date it was written and so on. So you can look at that and and the didache, you know, things you haven't seen. Uh, the I mean, uh, the, what's the apocalypse of Adam, Adam? I have no idea, but it might be interesting. So you can just roam around and you can just see what's all this stuff about. What's the secret mark? I, I have no clue. I'm just telling you. He, had, he or whoever did this has done a, an amazing job. Here's all the works of Justin Martin, so on. And, uh, you know, Gospel of Judas has become something of an issue these days lately. Uh, I don't know if there's anything to it. Uh, Gospel of Mark and so on. Epistle of James. So he, it's mixed. And the only thing I will say is he's going by dates. So it's all mixed in. So you can find our New Testament books alongside of things that are definitely not the New Testament, but are books of that era and the dates they came up. So anyway, now what are we trying to do? We're trying to look up Matthew. So we can go down here and he has an estimated date for Matthew of what? Let's see what he has here. So you have to kind of know what he what he thinks it is. So Matthew started in Hebrew and, and scholars put the Hebrew Matthew with 37 AD, four years after you know, Jesus' ascension. And but the Greek translation they put much later in time. So where where is that? Here it is, Gospel of Matthew. So we're going to go there. This is the Greek Gospel of Matthew. And then when you go there, you get to see all of this stuff. And um, I just want to show you something. See where it says "E Catena" references to the New Testament and the Church Fathers. So what we're seeing here is just Matthew, right? And you see all these great commentaries, all this stuff. I mean, there's so much that you can get out of the Bible just by knowing about early writings. But early writings has something unique, which is all the any references in any of the uh, early texts by famous thinkers, writers, Christian uh, commentators, they are then quoting God's word as they could read it at, at, at that time and putting it in the book. Just like today, the Christian writers will put in whatever the, you know, they'll tell you the ESV, the ISV, whatever it is, but they're going to quote the text. And so if in 100 years things are changing and people need to know what was the Bible as of the year 2022, they're going to look at books published in 2022 and see how we were quoting it. And maybe, who knows, something might materially change in the future. Now with print, that's going to be a lot harder to pull, pull off. But anyway, so now I could just jump right here to 19, but I want to show you, let's say you want to see all the Ikatana, that Ikatana means electronic chain. Katana is uh, uh, means chain. All right. So here you go. If you hit that button, you get to see all the books of the New Testament with their e katanas. Okay. And then you could look up Matthew 19 that way. And we're going to do it that way just to show you. But I could pick any one of these and I could look at all the letters that comment on that. So what's the first thing you see when you go there? You see, okay, 19 2. Now, um, if you want to read it in the NIV or the NAB, you can click that. But but the real thing is they're trying to tell you it's in Oregon's, and I, I pronounce it Oregon. Don't ask why. It's it's I studied I studied uh, Latin, and so in Latin we would say Oregon, but actually it's a Greek name. So I probably who knows, but I think it's Oregon. 
but other people say origin. Okay, so uh, Oregon's commentary on Matthew book 14, okay, and it has the quote. All right, now, uh, but we're not going to go there. We're going to go somewhere else. We're going to go to the verse that we were looking at. So now we're going to go down to 17 and look at all these cross-references, okay? And then we're going to go down to 17. All right, and I'm going to show you. Okay, what and and now nine seventeen has a lot of different parts, and so the part I was focusing on was the last part and part that's actually been deleted, <laughs> so so uh, or seemingly deleted. Let's put it that way. So the part that has been uh, definitely destructively handled is right here. None is good, but what is missing? My Father who is in heaven. Okay, and then he gives another quote of it later or earlier in the same book, and it's father being good is called that which he alone is good. So it still has father and still has he alone is good, but it seems like it got mar uh, garbled. And we have to understand these are these writings were ancient to begin with and were crumbling sometimes. So there could be damage, and to me this looks like this has suffered some damage. In fact, you can tell there was damage because you can't even you can't even read. You have to guess that it means he is good because they put in these um, uh, the dash with quotation marks. So uh, that's just a, that's part of life. These are these did not come to us as electronic text. They came to us as you know crumbling pieces of paper. Okay, so let's take so let's say you want to look this up. How are you going to look this up? Because you're going to find that it's not as easy as it looks. It looks oh, I just press this button and I'm going to be taken right to there. Well, no, you're not. <laughs> This is this is uh, one of the troubling things about it. You're going to be taken out here. And he's not wrong for doing this, but it's very inconvenient and very hard to use it as a result. But I'll, I'll explain to you what he's doing. The the work up here, if you look at the little thing, it's ccel.org. So this is a Christian library. That's what that stands for. And it has Schaff. Philip Schaff is the editor of the Anti-Nicene Fathers. And the next letters are ANF. I don't know if you can see this. ANF 2. So this must be, I'm going to bet, uh, well, anyway, it could be the second volume of the series. But it's the ANF means anti, A-N-T-E, Nicene, or Anti-Nicene uh, Fathers, F stands for fathers. I wish they had found another word because we're not supposed to call anyone father. So I, if I say it, it's just because it's conventionally the name and you wouldn't be able to find it if I don't use the reference of their what it's titled. Anyway, which is, by the way, just another reason that Catholicism is so strange. And if Jesus tells you don't call anyone father, what would you call the name of the priest? What, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Anyway, so... Um, now, it starts with the pastor of Hermas. Well, that's not uh, what we we're looking up. We were trying to look up Clement of Alexander instructor book. So where am I? So you're not there. So somewhere down the page, if you go look, uh, you'll find, well, my gosh, you got to go dig, 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 dig. So what are you going to do? You're going to, there it is, Clement of Alexandria, right? Okay, but you're going to find this fairly useless, but I'm going to show you the only use or b benefit of using this instead of what I'm going to show you next is that when you use the ccel.org version of the Anti-Nicene Fathers, you get the footnotes. So Schaff was very extensive in using footnotes. So let me just give you an example. If I click here, He's going to have, well, here I can just run to the bottom. I'm sure that there's always footnotes on every page. Ah, there they are. Look at all those footnotes. These are missing in the alternatives that I'm going to recommend that you learn how to use first. Okay. So, uh, but ultimately when you had to have to dig in and do deeper research, the early Christian writing has the best and most authoritative final thing. Okay. But. You'll see why this is not very useful in the long, uh, short term. So now, let's say I wanted to find, what's the words that I want to look up? My father, right? Can I just type in the words my father and just, you know, just on this landing page? Can I just go control F on the PC? My father. 
it comes up with nothing. Can you, I don't know if you can hear the sound. It's like a, it's like a dinging. It won't find anything because this is, this is, you cannot search this page. You'd say, what, what? You can't search it. You cannot search from this page in a text search. Now on the internet, it will, if you search my father, you'll find that way, maybe a cross reference to one of the sub pages here, but you literally have to know what chapter what chapter it is because this is all broken down in separate chapters so in other words in order to do those footnotes for you to make them available to you shaft had to individually compartmentalize each web page as separate so they're not cross you cannot do a search across all these uh chapters okay and then uh let me, let me just see something here. yeah so you can't you can't do that and that's a real bummer so you, this is almost useless when you get there. So you cannot find that, that quote that, uh, that you want to find so fast. You can't find it. There's no way you can find it using what he just gave you. And that's so disappointing, right? I mean, it's like, how can this be? But it's just the way it is. So it's useless at this point. But it's useful later when you want to dig in deeper into the instructor and see the footnotes. But you're not going to learn. See, he says book one. He doesn't tell you what chapter. You have to know the chapter to find it. And he didn't give it to you. So so this is frustrating. You're going to go, this is a useless piece of garbage. I'm not going to use this. Don't give up. Don't give up. He actually has some help for you. So what is that? So see, it's not this. I just want to show you. So go back. Go back here and go to the top. Remember that that thing we showed you at the beginning? If we could get back there, now remember, go back all the way. Oh, now, now, Clement of Alexandria, Alexandria will be in this list. Okay, I want to get rid of these ads here. Okay, so now type Clement. Ah, Clement of Alexandria. Ah, there it is. See? Now there he is. Now click that button. Now you need to find the instructor, and in, in Greek, that's the word pedagoga, pedagogus. It's the instructor. So now, what was the book? Now I got to try to remember. I think he said book one, right? So now we go to book one. Now look what he's done. He's taken each of the chapters that in in the uh, Antinousian Fathers you can't cross search the words "my father," but here you can. See the big difference? So now you go control F, you go my father. Now we have to type in my father. There it is. Now, now that this may not be the, the reference we need though. Let's see, the will of my father. No, so it's not the reference, but there's six total hits. I don't know if you can see my, you know, shows me one slash six, my father. So there's five more to go. Uh, gave you not the bread from heaven, but my father gives you. Okay, so that's not the same yet. I am the true vine, and, and my father is the husband. Okay, husbandman. And so that's third, fourth. None is good but my father. There it is. So you finally found it, right? So now you got to look up what chapter is that. Go back up here. It's chapter eight. So now you need to know that. And, and, and if you don't know Roman numerals, that's that's a Roman numeral eight. And if you don't know Roman numerals, you got to look up a Wikipedia article on Roman numerals to learn what that how that's done. OK, so um, but this is this is how you find the ultimate passage. And then, you know, if to do this right, you probably need to then block and copy this. And I have a little tool that I use from Airtable. I recommend everybody get Airtable. Um, if you don't have it, ask me for an invite. I get $10 credit. It doesn't cost you a penny. Uh, but see, I can now save this page to Airtable as what's called the web clipper. And you have to pay you have to pay a subscription of sixty dollars a year to Evernote to get the same features, but this is superior in my opinion to even that. So now I can you know I can put notes in here. Is uh, the my father reference is in chapter eight? Okay, there you go. And I can also categorize it. I can go you know Clement of Alexandria. Uh, um, do I have yeah? So there's Clement of Alexandria, and now I've sorted it. And now when I want to, I can go back and find it in that database I keep of articles I, I look at. And that's how I do research. Just so you know, Airtable is flawless. I mean, it's the best product on earth and it's free. 
for almost anything you need. 99% of things that most people need. But if you want to do what I do, which is you want to upload uh, your your book library to the internet, all my books are online. I have over 300 of my bo uh, books that I've collected from public domain. And some of them are my own personal books. I have about, you know, another several, whatever. I have books that I've had scanned by outside company to store my books permanently so I don't have to, you know, pull them off of the shelves and I can just have them electronically and share them with you. So let me continue here. So, okay. So what we established is we were able to show you that it was in chapter eight of the instructor or pedagogo pedagogus. And now what if you do want to see the footnotes to this chapter? So there are no footnotes here. Do you see that? If you look down here, you don't have any footnotes that are even connected. And if you go all the way to the bottom, let's see if we see any footnotes. So we see no footnotes. So that's that's the disadvantage. Some advantage, big advantage, because you were able to search and find it. Otherwise, you have to read every chapter. I've had to do that until I figured out how to use this thing. That's why I'm saving you the time to learn how to do use this. So now... You want to see the footnotes. Maybe, maybe there's some useful information. So what do you do? You now go back to, uh, well, let's, let's go exactly backwards. So to go backwards, to get to that first link that he gave us, we have to now go back to Matthew, right? And then we're going to go to 19. We're going to find verse 17 again. Oh, hold on here. 17, and then we're going to, we got to find Clement of Alexandria, and we're going to pull this up. Now, when I pull that up, what's it pulling up? It's pulling up this very difficult to search thing, but now I know it's Clement of Alexandria instructor, and that's mixed in all, all these other things, Pastor of Hermas and Titation. So now I got to find Clement of Alexandria. So you type in, uh, you go Control F in PC to, to do a search. I'm sure Mac has a search term you can use. There it is. I type C L E M and it popped to Clement of Alexandria. The first book there is Exhortation to the Heathen. That's not what I'm interested in. Then the instructor, book one, chapter eight. There we go. Now I type the words my father, right? Just to make sure I'm on the right page. Ah, my father, excuse me, my father. And remember, it was multiple things down. My father. Oh, there it is. None is good, but my father who is in heaven. It has a footnote 1201. Let's see what it's about. 1201, and it tells you it's 19 verse 17. So they use footnotes to be helpful, but there was nothing particularly stunning or shocking about that. Actually, in a way, the people at earlychristianwritings.com probably was able to use these cross-references themselves to then create their web page. So it sort of goes both ways. But anyway, that's it. So there was no there was no value to the footnotes here, but lots of times there is. I mean, I don't know if we can see any. Uh, they'll sometimes they give you alternative readings. Uh, let's see what else. Here's a reference to Plato um, that you wouldn't otherwise know about. And... Um, Anyway, so that's how you ultimately can exhaust to the nth degree knowing everything there is about that one reference from the instructor, and then you can copy it out, put in the, the, the hyperlinks for others to follow your footsteps, and then you've done all your work. And I use PowerPoint as where I throw things now. I, I used to always put everything in, you know, uh, word processing articles and all that, but I'm now seeing the benefit of be, me being able to illustrate things in real time like you're able to see how i did all this stuff right you are you're learning so much better than if i put this can you imagine me putting this on a piece of paper to try to describe this to any of you it doesn't wouldn't make any sense we're living in an age where we can now recreate exactly what we do sitting at our computer to research something and in, in a way that then teaches the next person how to do it exactly the same way saving you bun bundles of time explaining how these things work together and you can make better use of these tools. Okay, so I hope that helped everybody and God bless, take care. Yeah, bye. <music>